Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's discussion about Johnny Depp's finger, how it got chopped off and all of that good stuff. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Liz. I'm a family nurse practitioner, and I react to all sorts of healthcare things and hopefully try to weasel in some education in there as well. Today's main topic, um, we're going to look at what was severed finger, um, conflicting hospital documentation, gruesome finger wall paintings, and vodka bottles have in common. It's Johnny Depp's finger. It's probably not too hard to figure out. I think it's in the title. Um, the Johnny Her Johnny Depp and Amber Heard defamation case is going on right now. And since I've been getting more into these legal things, I've dived into like law tube and now like this sucked me in. So they do have some healthcare aspects of it that I did want to comment on and hopefully like straighten out um, because I can't offer any legal anything, obviously, because I'm not a lawyer. Um I have been following this over on Legal Bites channel. I will leave hers down below. She's talking about it in live stream. She has a ton of different people on her channels, a bunch of lawyers. She's bringing in a couple behavioral analysis. Um, so I just thought I would give her my healthcare insight. I've actually been able to be on her channel a few times and it's been super awesome. So before we dive in and we go over everything, I just wanted to thank Sandy for sponsoring today's video. She bought me a coffee and said, thank you so much. Um, if you want, uh, she said, English. I'll get there. She said, thank you so much for the Zoloft update. Have a great weekend. Um, and thank you. So I recently did a video where I've been taking Zoloft for a year and a half and I did like an update video on it, trying to destigmatize it and say how it's normal. And this is what my experience has been. If you want to watch that, you can catch it below. Um, and if you're looking for any way to support the channel, um, all of these lovely humans have become members. You can become a member too. We're having our first members live stream this Thursday. That's down below. You can buy me a coffee or you can just like subscribe and share with friends. That is also glorious. Okay. Let us dive in to what has been happening. So in case you haven't followed the whole thing. Let's look at the situation first. Johnny Depp and Amber Heard are in a defamation lawsuit. Basically she is filing. Um, he's saying, Hey, you said all these things about me that I, um, hurt you. We're going to use like YouTube safe words. Uh, and she's saying, you know, and he's saying that ruined my career. They got, what we're looking at here is the, what they call the Australia incident or where Johnny Depp's finger got cut off. So we have what was happening there was they were arguing, right? Usually that leads up to some pretty scary things. In the course of this argument, Johnny's tip of his right middle finger, it gets cut off. I will not be showing in this video actual images, but I did draw some to give you an idea. So if that really grosses you out, um, I'll give you a warning right before, but know that that's there. And the whole thing is we're kind of talking a little bit about like uh, domestic struggles and abuse. So if that's not your jam, please just feel free to skip off of this one. Anyway, so tip of Johnny's finger gets cut off in an argument there in Australia. Uh, then he goes on to do some drawings on the wall with his appendage that has just been chopped off. So it's like bloody. And then he like dips it in paint and he's like writing messages on the wall. Um, and then when they go to the hospital, there's several different accounts that are going on, right? So he tells his personal doctor that it was just that he says he uses the verbiage like it was my finger like i chopped my finger off he now says like that means you know how you would anyone would say like oh i chopped my arm off you didn't really someone amputated it like in an or but it's a like a way of speaking he says that amber heard threw a vodka bottle at him and that is how his finger was chopped off amber heard says no he sliced it with a knife and then johnny told some people in the hospital that he closed it in like an accordion style closet door and it ripped off that way. But there's also documentation at the hospital that it was cut with a knife. So there's a lot of speculation around, well, why even within the hospital documentation, documentation is there so much variance in what was actually written? Um, and now that brings us up to present day where this is all getting up, brought up in court because it's obviously going to look very different. You know, if he did it himself and he's claiming that she did it, like if he chopped it with a knife versus like, did she actually chalk a vodka bottle at him? Like, obviously if they're, you know, that's going to play out in the violence and they're trying to, both sides are trying to prove, Hey, it wasn't actually me. So that is the alleged situation. There's three versions of the stories we're going to look at Amber Heard's version where he cut it with a knife, Johnny Depp's version, which is she threw the bottle at him, um, that chopped his finger off. And then the hospital's version that has both an accordion door and a slight knife slice 
being the actual cause of the injury. So let us, oh, Sophia says, um, love your ombre nails. So pretty. Thank you. <laughs> They're purple. They're fun. I'm enjoying them. So let's look here. I'll put my warning at the actual injuries here. Here's our warning. Um, these things are going to be depictions of wounds ahead. They are drawings, but uh, they still might make you feel icky. So I'm sure that's a very, very legally sound warning right there but you've been warned. Um, so this is the image that was released to the media of his finger. So we're going to kind of talk about um, his, what I think caused the injury from like a healthcare perspective. Um, this is the image that they show. So this would be his middle finger. It's being held by someone. It looks like I've described it as like someone came and took like a dinosaur came and took like a bite out of it, right? There was no tearing involved. It just would have been like a solid chomp. And then the dinosaur ran away. It's probably not di how dinosaur bites actually work. However, that's what this is looking like. Some claw, something came in, chomped and grew away. This is called like, so this injury does not look like it was crushed. It does not look like it was torn. Um, and we're going to look at the different types of injuries that you can have with something like this, but this is sort of what it looks like. Um, now let's see if we think it's like a slice injury versus a velocity injury or a crush in just injury, right? Cause those are the three primary types. If the finger was look, this is another image of like how the finger looked and I, it looks to me like a velocity injury. So that is what I think it, it did end up being. And I'll show you the other two images and why, because if you can see the cross section of it, so the first one's on facing it head on. So you can kind of see, it's not just like a straight cut. It's like cut out in 3d. So there's like a chunk from the side and then from the back and then from the side, this would not, it has a jagged edge, right? And it looks like it's, there's no bruising around the edges. It's a clean cut, but it's not a straight line, right? So there was some form of, uh, the object that hit it was not straight because this looks like it was done in one cut. There was no other bruising or any tearing or anything around the edges, which leads you to believe that it was an object that was very sharp and was likely going at velocity because it hit and it had enough force to then take the skin with it and just like push on through. Right. And remember <laughs> we are talking about these like slightly gruesome things. So <laughs> no, no harm, no foul. If you bail. So there was enough power that it was going to actually push it through other velocity type injuries are, you know, going to be like gunshot wounds, any type of, you know, knife something, but this is what that reminds me of. It's a solid chomp. It doesn't have any other characteristics of a crush or anything like that. If this was the case, like, this is what I would think if you, this is what patients look like when they come in with injuries similar to this. I have had uh, many patients in both primary care as a nurse practitioner. And then as a nurse who come up in with different sort of uh, all sorts of injuries. And this would align with something where I would say, Hey, you hit something on that very fast. The next one. So what if he had actually sliced it with a knife? This is what it would more look like, right? So it would be a very clean, straight line. There wouldn't be again, usually probably not of like, not really bruising initially, not any tearing, especially if it was a sharp knife, it would just be a very clean cut. And we don't have the three dimensions, how you can kind of see here where it's like a, ch a whole chunk. It's like, boop, you get a little slice. And then we can look at, so this would be, um, like I said, like a slice injury, a knife injury. And then we can compare it to what would it look like if it was a crush and tear, which is going to be something more like a door, right? If you got it caught in a accordion door, that's going in and out like this, it's going to crush it. So there's going to be like, it's not going to be clean. It's not going to be a straight cut. And then it's going to be jagged because there's going to be some kind of a pulling motion. This is going to be things more like bites. Um, if you like, if people are presenting with like a bite from the dog or, oh, my toe got caught in the lawnmower. All of those things are going to look much more like this, where there's just like massive maiming that we don't like. So that's what we're looking at kind of there. So for those reasons, I really do think that it looks most like this. Firstly, you know, if we're looking at this, it looks more like a velocity injury because that's kind of exactly what it looked like. So I would tend to believe him that this happened that way. If it happened, any of these, if we were only looking at these three options medically, it looks most like, Hey, yeah, you probably did get sliced with something going at high speed. Someone hit you somehow with like a glass bottle, like a vodka bottle. So, um, that's kind of what the wound tells us. Right. So then we have to ask ourselves, okay, so now we have that, but why does the hospital story 
why does that vary so much? Right. So the hospital has, like we said, different documentation they have within their own notes somewhere it's documented, you know, Oh, he like closed it in a door somewhere else. It's documented that he sliced it with a knife. Um, does this prove that he's lying? Why does all of this happen? So why we can first look at why did Johnny say that he crushed it in a door at all? Like, why was that even brought up when obviously that's not the, like what he's seeing now? Um, this is really, really common actually for people who are in, um, situations where they're not safe at home and they're being harmed for them to protect the person who is harming them. I, again, saw this countless times as a nurse and as a nurse practitioner, um, where my patients would come in and I knew, like, I knew that those types of injuries were not something that were going to be self-inflicted. Something was not being told the correct way here, but they were protecting the person who did it. And this is incredibly uncommon in these types of situations. And if you are someone in these situations, please seek help. Um, please know that this is never an okay situation and there are safe people you can come out and talk to, um, and who can then help you get out of the situation without making it explosive and like in a safe way that's safe for you. Um, so it's very, very common for someone who is trying to cover up for in a domestic danger situation for someone to lie. Um, why did the hospital documentation in other places say he had a knife? A lot of people are saying that's really weird. Like why is none of this story straight? And this is, um, just a very sh like normal thing to happen in the hospital. If any of you have ever encountered a medical situation, right. In any healthcare, there are going to be, you're going to tell your story 12 times, right? You first go in, you, tr the triage person in the emergency room, you say, Hey, this happened. You go back, you tell the nurse, she's going to ask you again, or he's going to ask you again, Hey, what happened? They'll tell you you go and then you have to tell the resident and then you have to tell the attending and then you get admitted and you go up to the floor and then the plastic surgeon, you know, like so many different people are going to come together and hear your story. And sometimes you like a different story might be told. So what if he went in and told the nurse what happened while one of the people that was with him went and told the triage person and that they didn't align their stories first, because obviously they're covering up a domestic situation. So the guy's like, Oh yeah, it got cut with a knife. Johnny's off there telling a different story whatever information got entered into the note could then just be like copied over and over. So then the resident who comes in is like, Oh, look, this triage note from the front nurse, it says that it was a knife. So I'm just going to copy that note for the sake of time, because we copy notes all the time in healthcare. Cause there's just not enough time to write them out individually all the time. So you're kind of like, Oh, yep, that sounds good. So even if that was not directly relayed via communication, you might've already entered the note and didn't go back and redact it. You might've just heard through telephone. Then the triage nurse says like, oh yeah, he's here for this. And even though you ask and you get a different answer, you might not go back and change it because documenting falls by the wayside all of the time in healthcare. And it's like a game of telephone. I have many times had a patient in front of me where I'm reading their note from something and what they are saying to me about their experience is not what is written. I'm like, that is not what has been written and what has been copied over and over and over and over again in the chart. And we find out it was just a scenario of it got messed up first. And then that little like mess up, everyone has just been doing, you can import a note or duplicate a note and just like change the today's details, which is what most people do, um, charting as a provider. And so then that mistake that you made way back then, it just gets copied over and over and over again. And that is how mistakes show up in charts. Jen said, not to mention in a teaching hospital, you'll be explaining your story in front of a group. Yes. So someone could have written it down wrong. Someone could have heard something differently, like especially in, so we're adding that to the combination of he is already probably not telling the truth if he's trying to cover up for a domestic situation because they're trying to protect the person who is harming them. So that is how you can end up with a totally different story in your charting, right? Is because there was one little mistake written down wrong or someone told him something else um, and then it cascaded. What my thought would be is that when he was getting in, I could imagine a situation, again, this is all like alleged. I can easily imagine a situation where he is getting reeled into um, a setting, he's bleeding. And so they take him immediately back and then they ask his friends or who's with him, Hey, what happened? And they say, Oh, it got cut with a knife. And then he goes back and tells them something else. That note from admitting gets copied over and done. Um, who said case says hey, we absolutely cannot copy notes. And that is good. If your institution does that, um, ours did it all the time, especially as a nurse practitioner, you copy your last note. 
right? Whatever you wrote last time, most things probably haven't changed since the last time. If you look in um, hospital records, nurses, any of you, the resident or physician or nurse practitioner PA, they're just going to copy it from the day before and update what is current because I didn't, most of us don't even have enough time. And I mean, is that perfect? No, absolutely not. You're probably technically not supposed to do that, but in the real world, that's what happens because there's not enough time to write a whole note every single time. So, uh, the next point kind of being, um, writing on the wall with blood is weird <laughs> and it is, no one is in any way denying that, but they really harped on that in the trial. They were talking a lot about like, after this injury happened, Johnny was acting really odd. And like, what was all, <laughs> what was going on? Like, why would you do this? And they, I hope they bring someone in to talk about the fact that after trauma, um, no matter like after trauma, no matter what your brain is a mess. So our brains really like looking at information that makes sense, right? Because it takes a lot of work for your brain to encode new information. It likes to, you know, how when you're driving and you all of a sudden end up at target and you're like, I don't remember any of the turns it took to get here because your brain's done it so many times. It just picks out the memories. It's like, oh yeah, I'm going to pull out like when your kid screamed at you and you almost got rear-ended. That's a, that's, we'll keep that memory, but everything else always happens. We'll get rid of it. Your brain really likes patterns. It's less for it to filter through. It makes it really easy for it to pick things to actually remember. It does not like chaos, okay? So any kind of trauma situation is complete chaos because your brain's never seen it before. It wasn't prepared for it. Johnny Depp's brain was not ready for his finger to get cut off, okay? So this is all new information and it kind of just like fritzes out. This is why you'll see people after they've been in traumatic events where they have no memory of it because your brain is like literally not encoding it. It just, it cannot hang. So it kind of just like does a fritz. And after you experience a trauma, especially your behavior is very erratic. I have seen this many times with patients right after they're admitted after a really traumatic incident. A lot of times being in the hospital itself is a traumatic incident and people will do things and then that are wacky, like real, real wacky. And then a few days later, um, they will kind of be coming a little bit more around and they're like, did I really use fluids from like, did I really go to the bathroom on the floor and then smear it all over the walls and act like it was a painting? And you're like, yeah, yeah, you did. But, um, like that was a trauma response. And like, that's not, that would be, they're so embarrassed. And they're like, that's not something I would normally do. I'm like, I know your brain was just like, it could not hang the logic parts shuts off and you do that. So they were really, really hammering on why this was like really weird and everything. And I just think that's a total waste of time because you can't take someone who's just been in a traumatic event like that and then act them to like, ask them to go forth and be thinking like a rational human. It's just not going to make sense. That is why are we harping on that? If that makes sense. Um, and trauma takes like many different forms, um, too. So like, this wouldn't just be like physical trauma. This could be like emotional trauma, anything like that. Whatever happens afterwards is just not going to be super duper reliable. So those are my thoughts on all of that that is going on. I do think it was probably like a velocity injury. I would imagine, you know, I don't know if it's a vodka bottle or whatever, but whatever it was, he was sitting with his hand over the bar, kind of like this where's my finger. And so it smacked by him and it took the finger with him. If it was a slice, it would have been a clean cut. If it was slammed in a door, it would have been a tear. If it was, I've also seen a phone thing going around over. It might've been a phone that would be a crush injury. And that would look much, much more like the severed one that we kind of saw like in a door that would have more of these characteristics where it's like messy, right? Because it's a blunt force trauma. This is a clean cut type of situation. So that's, that's what we're looking at there. Um, I'll, now we'll kind of go into like, just kind of like chatting and we'll get your, all everyone's opinions on things, but those are the three big things I wanted to point out with this whole case. Um, I'm going to probably cover other things as they pop up with this, but also in just general, like, um, commentary, I'm getting like getting into just doing more like commentary type stuff on explaining the healthcare things behind things that come up both in the healthcare and just the whole pop culture world. So thanks for hanging out. If you were here now we're going to like, just, we'll do a couple chats. Um, and then I'm actually going to get off here soon because I want to go watch legal bites <laughs> and get her. I've been watching all of her streaming of the trial in the background. So I'll leave her channel again below. Um, but yeah, thanks for hanging out. If you have any thoughts, feel free to 
lay them in the comments. If you have any questions, leave them there and we'll just chat. Um, I'll try to timestamp some of these too so that we can have like quick answers, but I'm really proud of myself for getting all of that done in 20 minutes. I don't think I've ever gotten to my point quicker. I've got a lot of people commenting that I need to be more like to the point. So I hope I made some of you happy. Um, Hi, Fred, uh, who said, Kate said, I see this frequently also incorrect info repeatedly copy and pasted. I get time is crucial, but look what can happen. Oh, absolutely. I have seen constantly, like I've seen a lot of charting where people will document on a double amputee. So they don't have like anything below the knee and they'll chart pulses on them because one nurse did forever ago and everyone's just copying and pasting the charting. Um, so things like this happen absolutely all, all, all the time. Um, who said, Kate, thank you for explaining trauma response. Interesting. Yeah. I thought that was very, when I learned about that, um, it was fascinating to see, uh, I have a, my original degree was in neuropsychology, um, and learning how your brain, like, which makes sense. It just cannot handle all of that information. So it just, you lose a lot of function in the front where it just kind of shuts down. That's a lot of our logic, all of that. And you just go very primal and very, I'm going to write on the wall with, things from inside of my body, which is odd, but oddly frequent. Like I cannot tell you the amount of times that people have come up from either a, they're a traumatic situation. And then they have used things from inside their own body to write on walls. I'm like, what is it about this scenario that like, you're just like, I, this is how I'm going to express myself. Uh, Shakira says, do you think this happened from a glass bottle or that Depp did it on his own? I think it happened from whether or not he did it on his own. I do, Well, I guess I have a thought there. But I do think it happened from something sharp traveling at high speed because he had his finger overlaying here. Um, it hit it really fast and it took, it had enough speed to take the skin with it and not just leave it hanging. So that means it had to be probably pretty fast. It would probably have to be pretty sharp because of the, again, we're gonna show some, not draw, drawings of it, so not pictures. It had to be fast, right? Because if it's like really chunking it out there and the lines, I traced this over the image. So the lines are really jagged, but they're smooth. It's not like if it was a crush, we would see this. And it's not like a knife slice where we would see it like this. So I do think that it did. Um, it was something that yeah, like a bottle would make sense to me from the wounds that I have seen that are very, very much like this. Um, and I think it would be hard for him to do it for him to himself. So his, he is right-handed and the wound is on his right middle finger. So I think it would be very difficult. Most people, when you see self-infliction wounds or like I cut myself with a knife or something, if you were cutting yourself with a knife, you would probably be holding it in your dominant hand. And he has testified that his, he's right hand dominant. You would be cutting off your left finger, right? Cause why would you ever be chopping anything with your left? Like it just doesn't, it, you almost, almost never see people with self-inflicted wounds that are on the actual side of their dominant hand. It's usually the contralateral side or the other side. Um, Z guardian said, Hey, I found you when I was trying to decide on doing an accelerated BSN. Well, hello, this is a very different direction, isn't it? <laughs> Let me know what you, um, ever ended up deciding to do. Uh, who said, Kate said, I, I saw you on legal bites. Why? Thank you. Hello. Yes. I do pop over there. And sometimes I get to be on the chat, which is exciting. People in the chat hate it. There's a lot of people that only like the lawyer people. And then I pop on and they're like, oh my gosh, like not this girl again. <laughs> So I saw a lot of people this morning, she like mentioned my name because I had uh, commented and there were a lot of people were like, no, <laughs> I was like, good. <laughs> I love how popular I am over there. Um, but I thought it was like, I was like, I'm going to be helpful. Cause like, there's no, they're all lawyers. Like maybe I'll give some insight. So, but then I came over and decided I would just make a video like this where it was all in one place. I also have a video I'll leave below of the nurse that they brought to testify in the Johnny Depp case who just said, I can't recall the whole time. And everyone was really mad at her. I was like, no, that's a legit response. Like she's doing great. Um, so I'll leave that link down below too. If you want to see why that nurse kind of just said, I don't recall or see my notes the whole time. She did it exactly what she was supposed to do, but people were not, they were not happy. They were like, why don't you remember anything? You're so dumb. I was like, no, <laughs> that's how I got involved in the first place. I was like on a mission in that comment section. Jen G said trauma can also cause you to block out things that happened before and after the trauma. Exactly. 
tons and tons of people will have just absolutely no recommendation recollection around it. Um, your memory can be really like, if you do have memory too, your memory can focus on really weird things or it can be very distorted. You cannot encrypt memories very well, if at all, when your body is in pure panic, right? You hear about this all the time when you hear, um, people coming in and they're like, Oh, I was in a car accident and they lost consciousness briefly. Right. However, they do not remember minutes to hours leading up to the accident to hours after, even though they were conscious, you know, and you'll be telling them like, Oh, well this happened. You said this and they have no idea. So your brain, if it is super overwhelmed, um, you can even think about this in an academic sense, right? If you're so stressed about an exam, you're not going to learn anything, right? If your brain's tired, if you haven't slept, you're not going to actually be able to encode or memorize anything because you're, str you're stress cramming and your body literally does not have enough energy and calm to memorize it. We need to sleep and allow our body to rest in order for our brains to have enough downtime to be like, let me put this in the places where they go. And this is, you know, you have to give it the space to actually remember. Um, cause it's otherwise it won't know what to do with the information. Like, just think about how much we have to process constantly. Our brain so heavily relies on seeing pattern and knowing like, Oh, this, we see all the time, throw it out. Oh, this is new. Better keep this. Oh, throw it out, throw it out. Like we see it all the time. And again, like trauma situations. Um, that's why you're exhausted too. After like a very different day. Um, that's why toddlers melt down after very different days. You know, if you're out and about, it's very fun and exciting, but it's so much that's new and it takes up a huge amount of your energy just to function in situations that are very new. Z said, I'm a career change teacher and almost done with prerequisites. Oh, that's awesome. Um, you'll be just fine. I really think like the biggest part about nursing that for a lot is just being able to communicate well and teachers are phenomenal, um, phenomenal teachers. So that's a huge thing. You're kind of the communicator between the healthcare providers who are very, very smart and great medically, but sometimes, you know, sometimes people are just like too smart. Um, and you're like, yeah, you, what just came out of your mouth when you tried to explain that to that patient made no sense. <laughs> so I think nurses are a great bridge because we understand the medical aspect and can turn it into like a language a patient can understand. And we do all the other things too, you know, nurses, Obviously, I think we're the best, but um, who said, Kate, don't recommend reading the comments on legal channels. They can be toxic and sometimes include misogyny. Well, that's good to know. Um, that's a lot of comment sections, but it's good to know it's very legal minded because people were really not happy with my presence. <laughs> I was like, goodness gracious. I usually make people mad. I, I, I make people mad a lot because I don't hide my opinions and I'm very... I believe them fully and think everyone should believe them fully. Uh, but usually it's after I've said something offensive or not offensive, but like that I know is going to be controversial, not just like, <laughs> and I've tried to be very non-controversial um, when on other people's channels, I, especially legal bites. Um, Alita is just like the nicest human. Um, Lock me in. Yep. I don't recall my notes show what happened. Yep, exactly. Over and over. And that's just to decrease liability from on her perspective. If she introduces any new statements as a healthcare provider into um, a, like any type of witness statement, that could come back on her. They could twist the words. It could introduce new questioning as a healthcare provider. I've you when you're coached, if you're ever um, coached pre-trial, if you're ever going to have to be a witness and give a testimony, they tell you. Um, I did this years ago. Um, you know, Hey, you don't remember anything that didn't, that you did not write down. You just, you don't recall it. Um, you can recall that you've worked at this hospital before and that this unit we worked on, but other than that, you don't really recall anything, um, which we kind of saw there. Locke said, it's scary when you realize you have lots of chunks of time, although seemingly present, it really is. It's very disorienting for patients when they come, um, in with this. And oftentimes people will just will ask you to recount it over and over and over again. Like what you recall from them, even though they can't recall, it is very, your brain doesn't like that when it can't fill in the gaps. And a lot of times actually your brain will fill in the gaps for you with other information, even if it's not incredibly reliable. Memory is in no way reliable. Um, the more you learn about that, the more terrifying everything becomes. Cause you're like, huh, <laughs> like what if, Oh, mm, that makes me worried about what I've been making up versus what is actually reality. Um, 
and yeah, it's fascinating. Um, suspicious, um, Darcy Claus said suspicious. She filmed him throughout the relationship, the audio of her saying she hit him. He asked if it was actually abuse. And she said, I'm 150 pounds, couldn't hurt him and told him he needed to be stronger. Yeah. So if you've been following along with the case, she's, um, Amanda Heard has actually recorded a lot of the conversations that they have had. I believe in the beginning it was a agreed on thing where Johnny Depp had said, at least this is what I think I remember him saying in testimony was that he had said, Hey, let's record some of our conversations so that we can play them back and hear like, so you can hear what you're saying to me. I think he was trying to get Amber to be able to, um, hear later what she was saying. And it turned into her recording him a lot, um, which is difficult because then she knows she's recording versus it's very different. If you, um, I've had patients before where a therapist has told them, Hey, sit down, put the phone on the table and then have the conversation so that later you can kind of hear, maybe replay it and see how it played out, what we could have done better and hear the other person in a different way. I'm not a therapist. I have no idea if that's a good method. I just know they've told me that. And it sounds like here it was her filming without him necessarily knowing. So she's going to obviously be able to paint herself in a different light while he has no idea that it's going on. So that's typically not a good, great thing that I would ever recommend just because you should both, both parties should be aware if things like that are going on. Um, I have had, again, like patients with that situation and it, it was, it's never good. There's, I mean, their relationship in general just sounds so incredibly toxic. Um, just from hearing all the different things and I feel very bad for both of them. I think this was two hurting people who just came together and it kind of magnified. Um, Darcy said, I'm sure you've, um, seen justifications like that. Absolutely. Um, I saw a lot of, so I worked in pediatrics for a long time and you saw a lot of kids covering up for their parents for abuse. Um, which was heartbreaking, but they almost always will cover it up. And then working in primary care, I was a primary care provider for three years and, um, I saw countless, uh, you, you get told things too, as a primary care provider, since you're like their person, um, a lot of things like that, a lot of, you know, Hey, this is happening, but don't say anything. Don't document it. Don't, you know, or they would either try to cover it up or they would really, like tell me, but ask me not to like write it down. And since you're an adult, there's not a lot you can do in that situation. So yeah, I've seen all sorts of things, heard all sorts of horrible stories of mm, things that go on at home. So do know that if, like I said, you are ever in situations like that, where you aren't safe at home, um, you can tell your healthcare provider and you can ask them to be like, to get you help, um, in a way that doesn't just yank you out of the home too. Like there are ways that you can safely exit a situation without, um, there is help for that. So just let people know, um, that that is what you need. Um, who said, and that is a lot of times why are, uh, when people will tell you, you have to come back and get your vitals done by yourself or, um, why someone might want to get you like alone in an office, never try to like overly resist that. Cause a lot of the times that's what they're trying to do is yeah, your partner can be in the room for your entire exam, except for like, I just want to chat with you real quick. And they might try to disguise it as something, you know, different. They're probably trying to get you alone to see like, do you actually feel safe? Um, who said Kate said this was in California though. California is a two party consent for a recording state. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how, I don't know the legal aspect of this at all. Um, of how, you can, um, like who can record what I know in some States you can record people without the other person knowing. Um, and it's totally legal to bring into evidence. I don't know if this is allowed because they're, I think I've heard them say, cause they're suing each other. But again, that would be a good question to go over to like legal bites or one of those other channels covering it. Cause legally I have no idea. <laughs> I have absolutely no idea. Um, my sister's in the room. She's coughing. Forgive her. Oh my goodness. Are you done? Yeah. Okay. Well, I can mute. <laughs> uh, Z guardian said is mandated reporting a thing in healthcare. Yes. Um, but it's, uh, mandated reporting protect usually protects, um, individuals who are considered vulnerable. So if, uh, a, 
anything is ever happening to a child, you are mandated to report it. If anything is happening to an elder, you are mandated to report it. And if anything is happening to someone who is physically, emotionally, um, cognitively impaired, uh, so you don't feel like they can make decisions, like they're sick in the hospital, they have some kind of a, you know, a cognitive thing where they may not grasp situations fully. Um, if it is, a situation like that, then you are a mandated reporter. However, with adults who have full function and don't fall into those categories, there is no such thing as mandated reporting, at least in most states, um, because adults have the opportunity to, you can report it. You can get like, it's kind of the responsibility of the adult to get help. So I have had many patients come to me and say, admit the, admit the terrible things that are happening, but they say, I do not give you consent to do anything with this information and you cannot. Um, I can't go and say, you know, and report this to anyone because if the person does not want to testify about it and get help with it, there is, uh, there's nothing I can do, which is, it is one of the worst things um, that some of those situations have just been horrific that I've been with, especially on a healthcare provider end because you can't do anything. So mandated reporters do not count in the situation of most adults, um, unless you are a vulnerable adult to which neither of them would really count as a vulnerable adult. They're all, they're both making their own medical decisions. Um, but yes, who said, Kate, yes, nurses and doctors are mandated reporters. Yep. And nurses, doctors, teachers, therapists, um, anyone pretty much who interacts with the public in any way, providing any type of like safety things are mandated reporters, daycare workers. Um, but again, only to specific populations. That's not like, oh, I've heard of like this horrible thing is happening. I'm going to go report it. Um, not with adults. Adults get to decide, uh, when they get help. Um, you can guide, you can say like, Hey, here are your options, but I can't actually follow through with anything of it. Um, uh, M said mandatory reporting varies by patient population in the state laws. Yep. So if any of you live, I have never, ever lived in a state where I could mandate or I could report adult, um, harm. But if you have lived in a state like that, like, let me know, because that would be, um, interesting. And I get, I get it. Like you can't make someone, you know, you can't make someone do that, have that breakdown in that relationship. Uh, cosmic cookie said their therapist suggested it for marital counseling. So they did now it's evidence. Okay. So this is how it came in. I thought there was something along the lines of that, but I didn't want to like say it if that wasn't absolutely the truth. Um, so apparently their therapist had suggested, um, that, Hey, why don't you record your, your conversation? So they did. Um, however, then it got very twisted and now in that situation, I'm sure the therapist meant, Hey, when you're sitting down together and you're having a conversation or an argument, record it. Not like, Hey, Amber, Hey, Johnny, like whenever you're mad and you want to catch the other person being like, you know, you've, they're kind of in a riled up state and they're going to say some things they regret and you know, you're recording. So you're going to act all sweet and like nothing's going on. Um, then you should record it, you know, and that goes both ways. Um, and said minors, adults with disabilities and elderly abuse for sure. Yep. Those are the ones that you can report. Okay. All right, friends. Um, I think that pretty much covers everything I wanted to cover on the topic. Thank you for being here. Um, again, if you like, you know, like it, like it, subscribe, share it. Um, membership stuff will be below. Um, and thanks again, Sandy for sending me a coffee and sponsoring this video. I appreciate you. I do all sorts of commentary stuff like this. So if it's interesting, feel free to subscribe, leave me your thoughts, or let me know something else you would like me to react to or explain. I really love explaining healthcare things. Um, teaching is like my, I love it. So I love making things more clear for people and trying to break down the whole healthcare situation and debacle that we're in. Um, Sophia, thank you for being a super best friend of the channel. I appreciate you. So she says, hi, Rachel too. <laughs> Rachel's my sister. Um, and Justine, of course, I hope you guys have a beautiful rest of the day. I'll leave, um, Alita's legal bites channel below. So you can check that out too. Um, she's doing a great job covering it and, uh, I'll leave some, if you're watching this on the replay, there'll be some videos here that you might also be interested in watching. Bye friends. Mm -hmm.